Okay guys, wanted to make this little video to share with you about a little printer maintenance for the X1 Carbons from Bamboo Lab. Um, I take very good care of my printers. I do all my maintenance after usually once a week, more than most people. But one thing uh, I had to happen is the control board fan blew up on this one. It just made a bunch of noise. I made a video of what the noise was and then it just stopped. So I said, all right, ordered some new fans. I filed a ticket. We'll see what becomes of that. But either way, I wanted to have my parts on way. And I ordered them and like four hours later they ship. So and they're cheap. They're under $12 Canadian so or $12.99. So what fan that is, is this one up in there. It's the control board fan. I know it's hard to see, but that's it over in there behind that heat sink. So that fan, I noticed a noise in my printer. Anyways, so I took this out, the green one, just to prevent it a little bit more. And I blew all the dust out of it. And while I was doing it, you know, I realized I haven't been greasing this shaft right here. I've been greasing the one that uh, lifts it up and down. the, But I haven't been greasing the one beside it. I didn't even know it was there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this all up and uh, put a little fresh grease on that and go from there. First, got to home it. This is what I use to take the old grease off because it gets dirty even after a few hours. That's what I use right there. It's a... Uh, 99% alcohol and it, it's not that expensive. There's lots of it on sale because of the extra that was made. So I just go along and I clean this all up really good. I get it out of every crack and I get it from down here. I get it from around the bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one because I haven't been. So a better view of that would be this. And I'll make sure that this is really good because you know it's hard to get at this one when you are trying to clean it and it's only from the front so i'll clean that all up it's actually really clean now already and i'll turn it around and i'll do the other ones and then i'll re-grease it but i'm going to go ahead and do all this before i put it back together and get all this extra dust out of here i really don't know where it comes from because i have ventilation and everything so after I clean the bottom, I go ahead and I lower the bed and that way I can get out this part here and get the grease off the top of it. So I clean off all the old grease every time. I know that uh, some people say it doesn't matter, but I like making sure when I'm starting back in, I'm going in with a fresh start. And then it gives me an opportunity to clean up closer here too and get that all cleaned up nice. So it's right back to fresh metal. And then what I'll do is I'll put some grease on. Now this is what I use right there. I ordered it from Amazon. Um, I, I take it all off and put fresh stuff on every time. The reason why I like this uh, is because it's the same stuff they give you and you get a great big tube. So, and it's pretty cheap, it's under 20 bucks and it lasts quite a while. Now this tool here, I printed it right off of Maker Lab. I like it because I don't want to put grease all over my fingers. You just go ahead, put like a, you know, pea size on there, just like that. And then uh, what I'll do is I'm going to grease this shaft just because it's never been done since I've had it. And it was pretty dry. And that's probably something that you should get to if you can. I'm sure that it's okay now with just that little bit right there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put some on this shaft. Right here, and it'll be the first time I've ever been able to get out the back of it. And I always check everything out, look up in and see if the bearings look good. Everything looks all right to me. I mean, it's moving a little bit, but I believe that they do anyway. I'm going to go a little bit extra on this, just because I'm going to be going up and down with it a few times. But I like this little tool. So I'll go ahead now, and I'll uh, turn the printer around, and... I'll be able to do the front ones. So just one second and I'll spin the thing around. So like I did on the back, the first thing I'll do here, put a little alcohol on my rag. I use quite a bit, to be honest with you. And then it soaks into the rag and I don't gotta keep putting it on my rag. And I'll go in here and I'll clean this all up like new. Now, a lot of the times it's dark in my print room, so I'll just stick a flashlight in there like that. But you look what comes off of that. And this has only been I don't know, a week or two, if that, not that many hours, not enough to be that dark, but 
and that's with me sucking the bat outside. So I just imagine if you don't have ventilation, what it looks like. It's nice to keep them nice and clean. Then you're not running into problems. I always clean up around really good on both sides. And then uh, I'll add grease. But first, I'm going to clean this one. Oh, that one's really dirty. Wow, they got extra dirty this time. I know I did print with ABS, but that being said, I didn't go crazy with it. So I don't understand, but whatever. Maybe just some of the filament I use was, even though it was all bamboo, maybe some of it was, uh, I don't know, old or something. I don't know what causes it. But yeah, it's definitely got white dust in it. So when I took it out to blow it out, I already cleaned out this fan here. So I'm just going to kind of wipe it off while I'm in here. Get the dust off it. And I'm going to clean the shaft really good. It seems to be really dirty. And I'll make sure there's no grease on the casing or nothing that can collect dirt. Because it'll just be awful. Alright, now I'm going to go up. Take my flashlight out first before there's something else breaks. Alright, now we'll go up. And I'll back you out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing next. So if you look down there, right down here, it's still dirty. So I want to make sure I get it good and clean. Sorry about my camera angles, guys. I usually, so what, I'll usually have it right good as I can anyway. But this time, I'm just trying to show you guys what to do the way I do it. Now, lots of guys do it differently, and they might tell you alcohol is too harsh. You tell them they're crazy. I think that's what they recommend. So, I'll get that all cleaned up. Then, I'll pull this out like this. And I'll pull all that spare filament out, and I'll vacuum that out before I'm done here. I'll put this back down. Oh. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and do what I did on the other part in the back, and I'll put a little bit of grease on this. Same grease, same process, a little pea-sized amount. Does the whole shaft. Does a great job. Right about there. I just filled that little track up on it right there. So I just put it all the way up. And then I'll rub it, make sure it goes even. Not that it matters, because it's going to go even no matter what I do. That's all it needs on there. Now, you could add more. It just ends up going out on the bottom, being stuck there for you to clean up next time you got to take it apart. So, I just go here and I tack it all on good. And I'll spread it out even as I can. And then I'll go back here and make sure I did it good enough. Looks good. I'll put a little bit more on here and do this one in here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show you it on the other side. And that's all I do there. I'll put a little bit more on right here. And then I'll do this one. And I'll rub it around. Make sure. The good part about this tool is you don't get to get all over your fingers when you're doing it. And it's free. <coughs> And it takes like seconds to print. It's a really fast print. So, I'll put the extra grease on this one because I always need this one a little less grease so that whatever I got left over, I can just rub it onto this one. And that's what I'll do. All right, cool. So now I'm going to move over to the top part and I'll show you how I clean the rods here. I can probably do it from down here, I guess. With uh, But for that... I'll grab a fresh rag. So, got a brand new rag here because you don't want grease on that at all. Again, alcohol. Little alcohol on it like that. Oh, lots of alcohol, I guess. And you just kind of go up here, clean that rod off really good. I'll do it. I'll go one way or the other, whichever way I end up going when I get in there. I clean it right up like that. Then I go the other way. And I'll clean that side. Pull the flashlight out because I'm not needing it right now. 
and you look. That's what come off when I clean it. It's all black. And like I say, this isn't that many hours, so I don't know what's going on with that. It's getting dirtier than before, but that's okay. Now, I'll go over top. I make sure I clean off the belt a little bit too in case it gets any. You look at how dirty it was that time on that side up here. Just had a ton of dirt. Then I'll go and I'll rub in these fan slots. I do all kinds of stuff that probably most people won't do. I clean all this. I clean the LiDAR thing. And I don't know. I just make sure I clean everything. Now I'm going over top. So what I'll do here is I'll take this. And I'll put it all the way to the back or the front, whichever I decide. And then I go in here with this, the rag I use for grease. It's still got alcohol on it. I'll flip it over because I don't want to rub grease around. And I'll clean these off with alcohol too. Now, lots of guys probably already know that. I'm just sharing this for people that maybe don't know. I'll clean all that up. Rub the bearings right here. Make sure I get all the gunk out of them. Then I'll put it forward. back and again it was dirty and then I'll while I'm in there I always try to get the tops of those pulleys just kind of you know keeps them clean now that I've got that same thing I just put a little bit of grease on there and maybe not even as much here and be careful not to get down the belts even though one of the things they tell you to do to stop belt squeaking on these things is actually put grease on them so i mean i don't panic about it but i don't try to get it on them on purpose either i'll pull a little bit more grease out put it on this one looks good and the good thing about these is it actually doesn't truly ride on it so then anything i got left i always save for this side now on this one i didn't get the front of it real good so I'm going to go ahead, put a little bit on that So, Even though it's probably all right, I might as well do it. I'm right here. Okay, so the greasing's done on this. I want to show you what I do next. I do this each time I, I uh, clean my printers. And maybe it'll help you. It seems to help me. So, And it keeps them accurate. And that's what you want. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'll show you the next thing. So now that I've rehomed it, I do that each time before I do the next step. Maybe you try that out. What I need to do is I'm going to set the belt tension. So I'm going to go ahead and back this screw out a little bit. Back this screw out a little bit. And then I go to the right two taps. One, two. And then I tighten it. Now I learned this from another guy. And it works really well. I don't over tighten these. But I haven't needed to uh, replace my belt yet. So I'll put that back in the middle. One, two. I'll point this over at this side. As long as you can see it. I'll come in here. I'll push this over. In just a second. I just loosen this screw. Right like that. And then I go two taps to the other side. And then I tighten it. And they tell me, and I've noticed a big difference, that that tensions your belt. One, two. So now all I gotta do is clean it up the rest of the way. Get all the dust out of it, put the cover back on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up real quick. I'm gonna lug this back out to the counter because that's where the back lid is and put it together. Next thing I do before putting it all back together is I take out all my desiccant. I think that's how you say it. I put it in here. This is reusable stuff. You can buy it on Amazon. That's where I order it. I keep everything nice and dry that way. And next time I clean the printer, I do this. That way they stay in best shape I can possibly keep them. And then you just put them in the microwave, funny enough, on the cross depend on your microwave for most of them say seven to 12 minutes something like that mine's a little different i don't want to give you what i use because i don't want to be responsible for anybody else's problems but you look at this before i put it in you forward look at this 
supposed to be bright orange. So that's how it gets when it's all full of moisture. Now I have, after I printed them, they're, uh, I got little trays and baskets as you saw me digging out for each one. So I'll put that in and then I'll uh, come back to it. And I'll stir it up periodically while it's in there. So keep that in mind and on to the next step. The next thing I do is I clean these rollers off. Even though I buy replacement ones, I like to make them last a little while. So I'll put my uh, rag on it and then I'll just spin it like that. This keeps them from squeaking and making a bunch of noise. It's just a good way to do it and it maintains your AMS. And then you don't have to listen to any issues if you get them. I mean, I try to prevent stuff like that from happening. Then it looks a lot cleaner. As you can see, they were all white kind of. I'll wipe this all out with alcohol too. Sometimes I'll lug this right out and blow it out. This isn't too bad. So my beautiful wife cleaned all the windows for me and the lid. I don't have to do that. I just go in here now, get any extra little pieces of filament that are laying around. I keep it pretty clean, so there really isn't that much. I put everything back in place. I got my ventilation in place. I'm not printing right now. So I don't really need that on. Next step for me is going to be calibration. Now, I'll do the calibration while I'm waiting for the desiccant to dry. Or not dry, you know, cool down from being warmed up. So, just one moment. So as you can see, it's all done. And it's dried. And I'm going to put it back in the baskets now. And then we'll go ahead and go in the printer room. All I do now is come here. I select the proper printer. It's technically what I call my green printer. I'll click this calibration. Boom, it'll tell me start calibration. And that is all there is to it guys. And then I just wait for it to go. About 21 minutes it says. And by the time that's done, my other stuff will be ready and I'll be able to slap that back in. So the calibration's all done. Press confirm. Gonna slap in my desiccant. Throw that in here. I'm gonna put them in. I like how these fit in. They've done me nothing but great stuff ever since I've been using them. Usually takes a few minutes just for the humidity meter to get back to where it needs to be. And I'll show you what we do on the inside. These ones pop down in here like this. I just click them in, make sure they're nice and firm skewer and this one goes in the same way pops in and that's it now i'm ready to start printing again so that's how i perform maintenance on one of my printers now for me that's what works for you maybe you do something different but i'm telling you right now from now on i'm going to be taking the back off of my printers every once every two or three maintenance, blowing it out with the air because that's what probably made my fan go in this printer. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out my other videos. Check out my shorts. Check out my Instagram. Check out my Facebook. Check out my TikTok. And check out some of the links that I share below if you're out shopping for RC stuff. Thanks again for watching.